Let me ask you a question now. Have you ever been hurt, shaking, walking into the wall? Lay awake in your bed at night till your tears begin to fall. Lay up to the hills where your hair comes. Watch Porch Talk, Thursdays, 7.30 p.m. The mother and daughter team, keeping you informed on SVP TV. Greetings with the Holy Word Peace. I'm Pastor Donnie, and welcome to Porch Talk. Ah, I said that blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Sometimes we just have little mistakes and hiccups in our lives, don't we? <laughs> we do. We do. And what's your name? My, ni my name is Donnie. That's my baby, y'all. Donnie Lachey. That is my baby right there. I am. I almost didn't make it here. What the what? Yeah. You too? <laughs> yep. Woo. Well, well, to God be the glory, because I'm so excited she here. <laughs> I'm so happy that my baby is my baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Praise God. So today we have special guests. Right. Ex exactly. Right. We have three special guests at this moment. Uh, we have John Lewis and Sakira. Sakira, somebody. She don't have a last <laughs> name. Shields. Shields. Sister Shields over here. And then we have baby Asaya. Hello, Asaya. We have baby Osaya. Amen. We praise and thank God for this show on today. This this show right here is close to home, touches the heart. This is a show that everybody can relate to. Relate to. Amen. Well, no, I'm not gonna say everybody. Everybody but can relate to it because even if you didn't do it, you might thought about doing it. Everybody can relate to it. Somebody can relate some kind of way. Well, that's true. Yeah. They got some family member, something. Right. That's don't true. be just don't don't correct me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Praise God. We glorify and magnify your name, O Lord, for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the Prince of peace. God, we thank you for life. We thank you for hope and we thank you for joy, O God. We thank you for keeping us even when we don't realize we're being kept. You are God and God alone and we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I asked John Lewis, John Lewis, That's what me. Bible scripture do you want to talk about? And he said... Luke 14, 23. Luke 14, 23. And what does it say? It says, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. So why you like that scripture? Well, without getting too deep in theology there, um, it convicted me at one point in my life where... Um, I was raised, <clears throat> I was rocked in a Baptist cradle, you can say. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very legalistic, very, you know, you must follow these rules. And then after, as we all do, I made a lot of mistakes in my life. And, right. and then um, I came to a point in my life where God asked me, well, I was complaining about what we're going to talk about, how I, I didn't think it was right. And, mm -hmm. and then God finally told me, well, what are you doing? What are you doing besides just inviting people to church? Now, I looked at the national numbers, and there were millions of people going to church. If, that's, if that made the difference coming inside those walls, well, then why was, our, why was our culture crumbling around us? Hallelujah. And, um, so church and I, is not I, the final answer. Church no. is just a learning spot. Church is a place yes. where you go to get the information, to give the information, right. to pull the people in. And what does compel mean again? Persuade, strongly persuade. Get somebody, come on. Give them a reason to. Come on. And I don't think churches nowadays um, give people a sufficient reason to come, not just to the church, but to Jesus Christ himself. Because church is not, church is not the answer. The answer is, is the love of Jesus Christ. And we have to be able to communicate that to the people. And it doesn't matter. I always tell, I think I told Akira this the day that we met on the sidewalk. I said, you know, all of you ladies, um, you're of the African American community. I'm I'm white, but we're not placed in black bodies or white bodies with souls. Amen. We're souls that just for a few years are encased in you these mean, color bodies. Right. And so, so what's the, what's to God, we're all the same color. My, the name of the ministry is Beyond the Pews for Life. It is a five hundred one c three. Beyond um, the pews. The pews, like church for pews. life. Right. So come on outside and look up and live. That's a, our, uh, motto. our motto is look up and live. We sit right. at the end of each show, no matter what we're doing, 
we say look up and live mm -hmm. because that's what God wants us to do. And he said that we could have life in an abundance. He said we have a little bit of itsy bitsy teeny weeny life. We can have right. an abundant life. And so we look up and we live. We yes. strengthen and we're here to encourage somebody else to do the same. Exactly. To turn to, to, turn to Jesus. The answer is not... The, the Christian worldview is the only one with the answers that our, that our culture is asking to the questions. And it's not Muhammad. It's not Judaism. It's sure not atheism. It's the love of Jesus Christ. And, and personally, I have found that that's the only thing that when we love each other, regardless of where we come from, mm -hmm. how much money we have, that's the one commonality we all have is that we're all sinners. We all need the grace of Jesus Christ. And that's yeah. what we try to try to spread and, and to communicate to these men and women. Right. Because in changing them, I change. Right. And that's what happens. A lot of times people look for the next person to change, but the change that happens to the person that's doing it is oh, yeah. it's miraculous. It's really Absolutely. wonderful. Because a lot of times uh, we think that, you got to make the change, but if we don't make the change and if we don't see the changes that we need to make in ourselves, then other people are like, "Well, you're not doing anything still." Right. You know, like you said, we're in the church, we go to the church, we go into the church building, but yet and still, when we leave out, we just go home. We go to yep. dinner, go to Applebee's or <laughs> Steakhouse or whatever we're gonna go, and then that's not, it's us not, and that's not the end of the story. That's merely the beginning. Yeah, that's and a refresher course. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, who is this talking about? She got a mic on. Oh, well you do? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So tell us a little bit about your story. Well, like, <laughs> Kira. well, I just figured like I had already had two kids, so like I wasn't ready for him. I wasn't, re I wasn't ready for a third one. Like my, uh, my two kids, like my first one, she was, a breeze like I had I have helped with all of them but with her I had I was in school I could work without a problem then when my second one came along it got kind of like a little rocky so like I feel like with him I wasn't gonna be able to do what I want to do so I just feel like you know what I'm just gonna get an abortion so like I won't have to then I won't have to deal with it. Then I won't have to deal with it, but. You do realize I said, give him to me. <laughs> oh, Lord, praise the Lord everybody. <laughs> but then I seen, John, well, John saw me. When, I, when, it, was time, when it was my appointment time um, to go to get the abortion, mm -hmm. um, I seen them too, but I, like this, this it wasn't gonna be my um, first time. This would be, it would have been my second time. So, so like, had one previously. yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So um, I was sitting in the car. I was waiting for my appointment, and then um, when it was time, I had seen them on the corner. So I'm like, I ain't, I'm not about to talk to them because I know <laughs> they're about know, to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know they're about to um, stop me or whatever. And if we talk too long, then I have to um, make another appointment. So I was like, I'm not gonna talk to them. I'm gonna walk straight past them. I'm going to be there. So then he, I. I heard him, t I get out the car and I'm walking. He was like, no, it, it was this other um, lady, her name is Felicia. She was like, hey, um, do you want a goodie bag? And I was like, no, ma'am, because that's how they get you to come over there and talk to them, do you want a goodie uh -huh. bag? I was like, they was like, do you want a goodie bag? I was like, no, ma'am. And she was like, well, we have um, candy in here, you know, like girly things, feminine girly things. I'm like, I'm okay, I'm good. Then he, then Mr. John was like, well, how about um, I pray with you? So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to turn down the prayer. Dun, so. dun, dun, dun. Got him with the prayer. <laughs> Got him with the prayer. What? I'm what? Like, what? So I was like, I'm not going to turn down the prayer. So let me just go over there. So I'm like, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And I'm going to leave. So I'm going to do what I got to do. Yeah. So then he started praying. And then afterwards, he, we were just talking or whatever. And he was asking me, like, why did I want to abort my baby? And I was just saying, like, I feel like I don't have no help. I be all alone. So I just wanted to go through with it. And I never did make it to the appointment because we were just talking and talking. Well, and talking. praise God for blocks. Right. 
Amen. That's 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 the way I felt when I was uh, impregnated with this one. I didn't want to raise another child by myself. I uh, only had one, and he was more a than handful. a handful. He was nine. They were nine years apart. And I'm like, I'm not doing this. Right. Boy, she's so cute. <laughs> Ooh. And she's such a blessing, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, if I had have done it, I don't, I don't think I, and I, that was the only time I ever considered it. But I love this girl right here. So, so you said you considered it because what again? I didn't want to do it by myself. Okay. I didn't want to raise another child. My son was nine years old. Mm-hmm. Her dad was her dad, and they know how dads can be. Mm-hmm. And so there, there we go. And I'm like, I'm not raising no baby by myself. Mm-hmm. My mother was there, and she loved her. She named part of her. She got so many names, but mm-hmm. I just thank and praise God for her. And, all her little nicknames and they come along with her. She got a lot of sweet nicknames, sweet ones, you know. So um, it's amazing how God can give you a gift. Yeah. This is a gift. What you say? Tell them. I'm a gift. Hey, man, go ahead, John. Oh, what are you doing? I thought you were going to give Ten grandchildren. Me. Okay. I got a question for you. Okay. It's, it's, five, it's, my son has five. So okay. Personal. Okay. I have four kids. Um, how old were you when you had your first child or your first pregnancy? Mm, I was, I think I was 1920. 1920. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how old are you now? 25. 25. Okay. So with your first pregnancy, how did you feel when you found out? Mm. I was confused, like, what I'm going to do with baby. Like, I didn't know what to do. Even though my mom, she got six kids, and mm-hmm. I'm not going to say I practically I practically raised them, but I helped you her. You were there. Yes. So, like, even though I knew what to do, I feel like I, w- I didn't know what to do with my own. Right. right. So, like, I was like, what am I going to do with a baby? Like, I don't know. But then I just... After so long, I was like, well, I know what to do. Then when she finally got here, I'm like, ooh, okay, this for real now. Yep. Like, she here. Then my mama, she just, she just taught me along the way. Like, she was just what letting me know, do? yes, like, this your baby now. This not for play. This not Barbie doll. This is for real. And you got to treat her like you got to do what you got to do. Okay, so, um. Before you found out you were pregnant, did mm-hmm. you have any life goals and yes. plans that you wanted to do? Mm-hmm. I wanted to go to, to school for nursing. Um, I didn't go to school for nursing. But when I had her, I was going to school for medical assistant. And I only had like two more classes left um, throughout the whole thing. But my car started messing up then i was asking people to take me to school they didn't want to take me to school my teacher had called me and she was like i could just come pick up the work do it and um bring it back to her nobody didn't want me to do nobody didn't want to take me to do that so i just was like forget it i'm not even going to worry about it yeah so i just I so do you feel did you ever feel like having your daughter like it became a burden or just a little bit a little bit yes so how did you overcome your feelings? What made you, what about your daughter, what about the whole being a mother experience mm-hmm. made you overcome the negative thoughts? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, like, yeah. I, I, love, I love my daughter and I just knew like, without her, I don't know, like I just, Mm. It's a lot of the, it's I don't know. I can't explain. Like it's just the the, the joy that comes yeah, with it, the yeah. feeling that you get, the <laughs> love that you have. So with baby boy, how was that? After you had the um had the prayer and everything mm-hmm. with him and you went through the pregnancy and yeah. then you pushed him out and you first saw him like did you was, feel any relief? Like, how did that make you feel? Yeah, I was happy. And I was happy that I didn't get didn't the abortion. Get I was I was so happy. I actually cried, like, when I was by myself. After you left talking to him? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was talking to him, baby. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Pork. Look at the little pork chat. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what I call my daughter. So it's not a. Don't be offended, bad. We, we yeah. When we cry, when we cry. We we, we cry babies. It was a, a movie thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's we all good. Are we are so happy here. So, so, John, tell us how we can get in contact with you. Or You can go to my website. It's um, uh, Beyond the Pews, P-E-W-S, Beyond the Pews for Life dot com. Or you can call me at uh, 901-409-5000. Say um, it again. 901-409-5000. And we, we stand in front of clinics and we offer assistance. We're not the type that you know, condemns, we're there to help, we're there to offer other options. Um, you so were saying something uh, earlier about if you need this and you need that, there are some yeah, gappers maybe um, You know, there, there's something. been times when, um, well, you know what, I'll let her tell that part with whatever she wants to tell. But um, I can tell you that we have put tires on, we've helped pay rent, we've helped put tires on vehicles, we've, oil changes, we've done, I mean, there's so many things I can't begin to, you know, just household goods, uh, but okay. but but the most important thing we do is let them know, and it's not just me. There's a whole team, people. So how about about we, how many in the team? Well, just on uh, our team is uh, there's five of us, but then there's a whole bunch of people that aren't directly involved in our organization, right. but they they're there. We we gave her a shower, and it was huge, and and uh, we brought her up to uh, Lexington, Tennessee, where I'm from, and I lived here for 17 years, but we moved back to Lexington, and. Brought her up there, put her in a hotel, and gave her a big, nice shower, and brought everything back down. And um, that's awesome. And so we, w the biggest thing that I that I hear from ladies is they feel alone. Right. And and, and I always tell them this: from the moment that we said hello and we shook hands, you're never alone again. And um, and I I've tried my best to stay true to that. Well, you brought your wife with you, but she's not in here with us right now. But yeah. How does is she a part of your team? Absolutely, she she's on the board. We have we have a board of directors. Uh, Dr. John Shelton with Shelton Eye Center in Lexington is on it, and uh, she is fully supportive. She's an accountant, so she brings some skills to okay. to bear there, and she works on our newsletter, and uh, she basically makes sure I walk out of the house every day presentable <laughs> when Amen. I come down here. I have two questions. Uh huh. All right, my one question for you is. Uh, since you are a 501c3, which is pretty much a nonprofit organization, yes. How do how um, can people donate? Okay, to it? good question. They can go to the website. There is a a, um, a way to donate there. Uh, okay. It's very easy. Or you can give me a call, um, and then I can you know if I'm in town, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to meet and donate like that, or you can. Uh, it's PO Box 333, Lexington, Tennessee. 38351, you can mail to that. We have monthly donors, one-time donors. Um, another way that people can help, I know it goes a little bit beyond your question, is I'd like to, to get into churches and let them hear about what we're doing. Right. Uh, we're not just saying don't have the abortion. We're saying don't have the abortion because we know what it'll do to you. Um, we can help you and we love you. If for no other reason than you're made in the image of God just like every other person, but so is right. your baby. And um, and we, we want to help, and and we have, we've got a, b a bunch of these. Every one of them is absolutely special. Don't call me no D's. And and they're beautiful. And I, you know, the the most I want to say this: the most amazing feeling I've ever had was when I held my children, right. all four of them, for the first time. Uh, but right next to that would be the first time I I hold each one of these babies. Um, because God did something there, and he formed a relationship between, you know, the, and I, I, t I don't shy away from talking about race because it's an issue, um, but we shouldn't shy away from it. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a middle-aged white guy from the country, and, and she's a, a young uh, African-American lady, but we came together through the love of Jesus, and, and we help each other because I've seen her change, but I've changed more than she has, and, you know, she hasn't. Watching her, watching this little fella, it, it's been like a parable living out in front of me. And, I'm glad uh, you brought her. Yeah, uh, I'm glad she so came. So people can see that, you know, it's just not talk, but it's actually a walk. Because that's some of the things that, you know, people can get up and say a lot of stuff. And that's one of the right. things about Porch Talk is we're here to encourage people to do and be the best that they can be. Right. We're not just, uh, we're, we're about to get a 501c3. We don't have one yet, but nevertheless, um, 
that's what the show is about is to encourage you to live your best you yep through christ that's exactly. what i that's that's what i try to do exactly through yeah christ. yeah and um you know i when i go speak at churches i'll be i'll be honest with you you know the white america ha- has let black america down in in um in a lot of ways and i've been very convicted uh, about not that i've ever done anything directly um you know I, I was raised to not judge a man by by their skin color just how i was raised but by my ignorance i ignored things right. and um this has brought it front and center to me and so, but you don't just help uh right black americans we're not african americans we are black americans okay we, we were not from africa <laughs> okay that, so i'm I, glad I, you said that I, but I, 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 I just don't like that term but uh we were born in america so we are americans right. but nevertheless uh you don't just help female blacks you help i help anybody who needs help well and it comes uh, to that, that abortions there. clinic yep. or whatever or even if it ha- doesn't have anything to do with abortion right. it, if they need help we can right. help them okay and um That's good you know, to know. In, in the black community I, I don't think people understand especially white america understands one out of three pregnancies in the black community end up in abortion one out of three children are being killed before they're born. One out of four nationally, when you consider all races, and that that is a travesty of of uh, monumental proportions. And well, I'm, I'm we, not willing to sit back and let it happen. With the statistics anymore. being that I don't go with statistics because they kind of be played with, but there's no race that doesn't do it. So right, you know, and, and, and it, like I said, it doesn't matter what the race is, what the color, or whatever they do, because. People have like they all. We all have the same feelings. We yeah. all feel exactly. alone. We all have that hurt feeling that uh, that I got to do this by myself feeling, and so it doesn't really matter what what color we are. It's good to know that people like you are here to help whoever it is that's yes, out right. there that feel that way. And, and that's, I'm that's glad my you point. said it's yeah. not just about abortion. It's about loving one another. That sounds like a song I wrote, don't it? <laughs> Well, the, the problem with our culture is not abortion. The problem is the, the lack of, of the love of Jesus. And we solved that problem. We solved the abortion issue. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break right now, and we'll be back with you in just a minute. You were talking about a good time to stage gospel music live from Memphis, Tennessee, featuring gospel artists from around the world. Toe tapping, hand clapping, down and long gospel music. Watch on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and your local Comcast. Download the SVP TV app now on your smart television and mobile device. Center Stage Gospel Season premieres Sunday, 8 p.m. Central. Welcome back to Porch Talk. Wait, Dunny, huh? Did we grow? We did. That's what happens, isn't it? It is. Wow. So who is this? My name is Jasmine Morton. Hey, Jasmine. <laughs> and who is that? This is Jace. Hey, Jace. Hey. Glad to see you. Glad you made it. All right, Jasmine, Donnie, go ahead with it. All right, so Mr. John Lewis here was giving us some information mm-hmm. about um, – his 501c3 nonprofit organization, how he helped women um, wherever he goes, whoever he can get into his reach. So can you, like, just let us know how Mr. John helped you? Um, I met Mr. John, I think. Um, I don't like your, the Mr. John stuff. Can we just call him John? Okay. <laughs> well, I met John Lewis um, in 2020. <laughs> I, I bet you like it anyway. I met him in 2020, and um, 2021? Okay. Well, it's been longer than that. And um, I was, um, I had my mind made up. I was going to get an abortion. And um, I had visited the abortion place like three times. And um, that don't sound too made up, do it? Yeah. This is the real life. I was made up. (laughs) I've been three times. And um, I've been three times. And the three times that I was there, I was stopped by a man named John Lewis. What? And um, the three times that I went there, we had conversations and whatever, and he explained to me the same thing that he has told y'all that um, I wasn't gonna be alone. That if he could do anything, could he help me? Put the mic up. 
I mean, I wasn't going to be alone if he could do anything that he would help me. And, you know, he even got me therapy. I mean, he got me, like, people I could talk to. Like, you think he was hitting on you? Oh, no, ma'am. Never. No, no, ma'am. He kept it professional. Um, even to, today, like, um, when um, he pick us up, like, I sit in the back seat. He'll sit in the front. Um, and it's always someone around when, you know, he's talking to us and everything. Like, um, I bet. I don't mean to keep saying, um, I have um, built a relationship with him, and I don't, I didn't think it was, you know, flirting or nothing like that. Well, that's know? good to know. Well, that's good to know. Like yeah. That, yeah. Just yeah. to make sure, you because know. Because a lot of I mean, times people, was, people want to know, right. you know. Right, and I think um, if it was a man of color, it would have been different. I'm not just, you know, not saying that because, you know, because there are more flirtations and whatever. He never disrespected me. He never got in line with me. He always kept it professional. So he's a married man, and he stayed a married man. He was yes, true to his wife. Yes, he never got That's what He was true to his word and what he believed in. Right. He was true to his word and what he believed in, in every through the Lord. every conversation that we have, we have with Miss Laura. Miss Laura is no stranger. She's um, always in, in everything that we have going. She is always in the, well, she is always involved. Miss so, Laura, Miss Laura is his wife. Miss Laura, uh-huh. So the third time that you met Mr. John and you didn't go through with the process with Mr. J, so we got back here. <laughs> um, what happened and how exactly did he help you along the way besides um, getting you in touch with the psychiatrist to help your mental? Was it anything else he did for oh, you? Oh, he has took me to doctor appointments. Okay. Um, he was with me through the whole step with Jace. I was not alone. Um, every, mostly... With Jace, like the first at the beginning, all those doctor appointments, it was him and Miss Laura. Hey man, <laughs> well that's with good. Me. Um, they walked me through my whole pregnancy because it was my first time carrying a baby, and um, they was there the whole time. Like, so why did you want an abortion? At the time, I wasn't ready for a child, and I had like a lot of things going on with his father. Still to this day, still to this day, I have a lot of things going on, and like John has been there all the way. John has got the role of being Jace. Papa. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Papa. John is Jay's Papa. Um, Jay's don't go over nobody's house but John's. Jay's don't go over cousins' houses. Um, aunts, great aunts, or nothing. Only person he's allowed to go with is John. So you got four big uncles, huh? Uh huh. <laughs> well, so John, tell us a little bit more about how to get in contact with you. We're almost out of time again. Uh, tell them again so they can, uh, ladies or whoever. You can call me. The, the quickest way to call me is uh, is to call me as, or text me, 901-409-5000. And um, it's, it, I've had that number for 20 years, and it, the reason I've had it is very memorable. And uh, you can call me or text me any 24-7. I've gotten, she called me at 12 minutes after 4 um, in the morning when he was born and um, to tell me. So uh, you can call me or text me at that number at any time. And um, www dot beyond the pews. That's p e w s beyond the pews for life. dot com is our website. You can donate there. Um, and call me just if you want to ask me questions. You know about what we do, to what extent we're willing to walk. And it's not something that we point them away from the abortion clinic, but we walk with them. Um, Amen. It, it's a ministry. Not enough of that goes on, and I haven't done enough of it in my life. And God got a hold of me, and I try to. I want to see this little fellow graduate high school. Amen. And, I, and that that's one right up. there. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> okay. We, well, we praise and thank God for you ladies coming out and sharing your story because sometimes that story is not always simple. It's not always easy. And so we praise and thank God for us three women right here. I was I almost aborted my baby as well. Mm-hmm. Ain't she cute, though? <laughs> She looks just like you. Ain't she adorable? Yeah. So we pray. <laughs> Can I say something? Right quick. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Another thing, um, John, um, the 901-409-5000 um, number, um, if you're not able to reach him, you can reach me. I'm always open. I will stay on the phone to talk to you, walk you through everything. Like, I, I have talked to so many ladies, and um, I saved so many babies. So give also. us your number right quick. My number is Erica 901 901- 
930-9287. I will walk you through whatever you need to. I also help, you know, anything, you know. So you're part of the organization now? Yes, ma'am. She became part of the organization, yes, ladies and gentlemen. That's yes, what it's all about, becoming a part of what's going on in life. Amen. Right. We praise and thank God for you guys being here on tonight. Okay. Hopefully we can get you all back again, John. Don't have to be at one time. You can come <laughs> back. Amen. Um, life is important. We are. We, we want to live. We want to enjoy life. We want to do what God called us to do in these last and evil days. And these little people right here, these three, yes, yes. Amen. Glorify God. Uh, thank you all for joining us here tonight on Porch Talk. Don't forget to watch us every Tuesday night at <laughs> at 8 o'clock. <laughs> and please don't forget to look up and live. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry,